Welcome to Electro Online, and now we're going to do a case where we have a population of 50. Again, it's a two-state system. Let's say 50 coins that we can throw up in the air. They come down, they're either heads or tails. And so what are the number of microstates that we can have? And of course, that depends upon uh, how many will be heads and how many will, will be tails. The max number of microstates will occur when the number of heads and tails are equal. We have 25 of each when n1 equals n2. Remember that n1 plus n2 is equal to n, which is equal to 50. We also want to see what the distribution curve looks like. In other words, if we are 10% away from the central maximum, what will be the percentage, what will be the height, the number of microstates in relation to the max number of microstates. And remember, as n becomes bigger, the shape should narrow. And of course, when we go 10% out, in this case, that would be 20 from 25 to 20, from 25 to 30, uh, because 10% of 50 is 5. That means we will be able to figure out what the number of microstates will be for 10% out from the maximum relative to the max number of microstates. And since the numbers are still relatively small, we can still use our calculator to find the what we call factorial of 50 and 25, so we don't have to use Stirling's approximation yet. We have that waiting in the wings right here when the numbers become too big, where we can no longer find the what we call the factorial of those numbers. All right, so let's try that. Let's find out what the max number of microstates is, which can be found by taking the number of n factorial divided by half of that, n1 and n2 factorial, which in this case n1 and n2 are equal to each other, summing up to 50. So let's try 50 factorial and divide that by 25 factorial and divide that by 25 factorial. And that gives me 1.26 times 10 to the, oh, let me try it again. Let me try that with my glasses on because I can see, yep, all right. So now when we convert that to an exponential, so we can say that is equal to, I'll take the log of that. There we go, and we have 14.10. So this is equal to 10 raised to the 14.10 power. All right, so that's the maximum number of microstates in a 50, a population of 50 items in a two-state system. That's a huge number, of course, that's already in, in terms of over 100 trillion different microstates. Now let's see what it would be when we're 10% off the maximum. What would be the relative height of that curve right there? So we're going to go n is equal to, not n, but n1. n1 is equal to 20 instead of 25. And so now we want to calculate the number of microstates in that case. And so that's going to be equal to 50, 20, which can be written as 50 factorial divided by 20 factorial divided by 30 factorial. And so let's see what that is equal to. So when I do that, I get 50 factorial. And let me use my glasses here, 50 factorial divided by 20 factorial and divide by 30 factorial. All right, so that gives me, let me show you what I get on my calculator. So it gives me 4.713 times 10 to the 13th power. If I now take the log of that, if I take the log of that, so there's my log button right there. So the log of that number, the log of 4.713 times 10 to the 13th power is equal to 13.67 and so that means that we can write this as 10 so this then becomes equal to 10 raised to the 13.67 power so that's the relative height of the curve at this point relative to the what we call the maximum value so what percentage is that so how high is the column how high is the how many are the number of microstates when we're five or ten percent off the central maximum so the number of microstates when n1 is equal to 20 or 30 uh, divided by the number of microstates at its maximum value, that means that n1 is equal to 25, is equal to 10 raised to the 13.67 power divided by 10 raised to the 14.10 power. So this will be 10 to the 13.67 minus 14.10. So 13.67 minus, uh, let me try it again. So we take 10 raised to the quantity 
13.67 minus 14.1 equals, and that gives me a number equal to 0 0.372, which is equal to 37.2%. Remember, when we did it when n was equal to 10, I believe it was somewhere in the 85% range. So now we're down to 37%. So this is now only 37.2% of the maximum number of microstates. So that means that as n becomes larger, the curve becomes skinnier, meaning that you have very high values for the number of microstates, but they drop off much more quickly as you go away from that central maximum. Again, what that means in terms of thermodynamics is that the larger the number of objects in the population, the more likely that the state that you'll end up will be where n1 will equal n2. So the probability will grow that you'll be very close to this ratio n1 equals n2 as the number gets big and that there's less, like, uh, less likely chance that you'll be away from that point where n1 equals n2, where you have the same number in one state and in the other state as well. And so we'll do that again. Now we'll use an example n equals 100 or n equals 1000 and you can see how that curve continues to narrow where the 5% the the height of the curve when you're 5% out from the central maximum where the n maximum number of microstates occur will be a smaller and smaller smaller value relative to that which seems to indicate then that as the number grows in size the probability that you'll be much closer to n1 equals n2 where the number of uh, the, 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 where the number of objects of the population belonging in one state being equal to the number of objects in the population belonging in the other state equal each other. All right, so that's how we do that for n equals 50. Now let's go take a look and see what it looks like for n equals 100.